In this video, we're going to do a disk method example where we're rotating around the y-axis. So here we're being asked to find the volume of the solid form by rotating the area trapped between the y-axis, y equals 3, and the function f of x equals x squared plus 1 around the y-axis. Okay, so if you've been following along with these videos, you know I like to do these in steps because they're pretty much all the same and these steps just help us organize our work. And the first step is to just sketch it. And the sketch really can be rough. And here we have something easy to sketch, which is y equals 3. That's just a horizontal line. And then we have this function, x squared plus 1. That's pretty easy because that's just a parabola, x squared. And then we have to just move it up by 1. So that would look like this. And in fact, I'm not even going to draw the left side because the right side, we have this area that we were looking for. The area trapped by the y-axis, y equals 3, and the function. So we're going to take this area, and we're being asked to rotate it around the y-axis, and what we would get is some solid bowl shape. Okay, so the sketch is done. That was pretty easy. Step two is going to be decide on a method, which we'll just skip because I told you we're going to use the disk method. But this will become very important later when we learn the washer and the shell method. And we have some harder problems where we really have to set these up from scratch on our own. But for now, I'm telling you disk method. And when, you're, when you decide on a method, I highly recommend that you write down the formula for the method you're about to use. And so in this case, the disk method formula for rotating around the y-axis looks like this. It is this integral here. Okay, so this is for rotating, this is disk method for rotating around the y-axis or any vertical line. So anything parallel to the y-axis. But in our case, it's the y-axis, so it's certainly right. And then what you'll notice is that we have this a and b and r of y. And once we find those things, we can just plug in and solve that integral. So that's the next step, finding those, those things. And so step three, like I just said, is going to be find a and b, the bounds of integration. And in this case, it's not too hard. Uh, for the When we're rotating around the y-axis, the bounds of integration are the lowest and uppermost par parts of the area. So here is a, the lowest most part, and b is right here, the uppermost part. And b is easy because the uppermost part is is just 3, right? By definition, y equals 3 is kind of the top part of that uh that area that's trapped. And then we have to find a. But a is also not too bad because a is this y-intercept. It's where the function hits the y-axis. And y-intercepts are pretty easy because that to find the y-intercept, you just plug in 0 into the function. right? When x is 0, that will give you where the function hits the y-axis. So f of 0 is just 0 squared plus 1 is 1. That's the y-intercept, so that's also this a value, the lowest most part of that area. Okay, so all in all, I said a lot of words, but nothing too hard. Um, basically, a we found by, by taking the y-intercept, and b was just given to us as 3, that uppermost part of the area. Okay, so uh, bounds of integration are found, and now comes the hard part, if you can call it a hard part, which is find this radius function r of y. And for this, we're going to slow down because this is our first example rotating around the y-axis. And so we're going to slow down and look at a zoomed-in picture and, and really study this. So to find r of y, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick some arbitrary y value you know, between the area here. And then you're going to draw a line from that y uh, value out to the edge of the uh, function or the edge of the area. And now if we imagine rotating this around the y-axis, something like this, um, oops, you know what, I need to be on a different layer here, sorry about that. So we imagine rotating this around the y-axis, we'd get some circle, and the radius of this circle is this initial line that I've drawn. So if I erase that circle, you, hopefully you can see that the radius would actually be this line here. So this is what we're after. This is the distance we're after. This, Given any y value, we would like a function where we can plug it in and get that horizontal distance. Now, how do we do that? Well, typically what we would want is a function of y. We plug in y and we get an x value out. Right? We get Because this x value here would be exactly the distance we're looking for. 
um, but we don't have such a thing. So let's slow down and really look at this. So what we, nor what we do have is we have this function, f of x, which is x squared plus 1. And the way we can think about this, this is, let's just think about this for a minute. We can think about this as tables of values x and y. And what the function does is given some x values like 0, 1, 2, it lets us find y values, right? These are unknown at the time, but once we plug in x, we plug in 0 and we get 1, we plug in 1, 1 squared plus 1 is 2, we plug in 2, 2 squared plus 1 is 5, right? So given x values, we can find y values. But that's not what we're what we're after actually, because we're starting with a y value. We'd like to find the corresponding x value. So we really have this situation that we're after. Given some y values, um, like maybe uh, one, two, and five, if we had had chosen these as y values, we'd like a way to find the corresponding x values, because that's going to be our r of y function. Given a y value, we need the x value out. We need the distance from the y-axis out to the function. Okay, but to do this, it's actually pretty easy. What we need to do is actually just solve for the function equation for y. So up here, if we took, or let me do it just right here, if we took y equals x squared plus 1, or sorry, we're going to solve this for x. So if we solve it for x, we'll subtract 1, we'll get y minus 1 equals x squared, and then take the square root, and we'll get the square root of y minus 1 equals x. And now we do have a formula that we can use down here. If we plug in values into y, we'll get an x value out. So let's go ahead and do that. If we plug in 1 for y, we'll get 1 minus 1 is 0, the square root of that is 0, so x will be 0. If we plug in 2 for y, we'll get 2 minus 1. The square root of 1 is 1, so that's going to be 1. If we plug in 5 for y, we'll get 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root of that is 2. Right? So you see that this expression is actually a function of y. We, given a y value, we can figure out the corresponding x value. So it's, it's kind of the opposite of what we're used to doing, but that's what we had to do. We had to solve this function equation for x. Right? That's what we did in this work. And that gave us now a function of y, where we can plug in a y value and get an x value out. Okay, I hope that's clear to you. I hope that makes sense. And in the end, what we figure out is r of y, the function we're after, is, is this function, y, the square root of y minus 1. Given a y value, it's going to tell us this, this x value that we're after. Okay. So, like I said, I hope that's helpful. Slow down at this part, rewatch it if it if it's confusing to you. But really, it's just as simple as just taking this function and solving for x. Okay. So we're done with that part. Finding r of y is over. And what we said was r of y is the square root of y minus one. And now the problem is really over. So this video is a little bit long already, but all of the hard work is done. And now it's really just busy work. And so the last step is plug these things into this formula and solve. And that really is, in my mind, just busy work at this point. So we're going to take this formula, plug in A, which is 1, B is 3, then do pi, and then R of Y is the square root of Y minus 1, squared dy. So we just plugged into this formula. And now we have an integral to solve. And like I said, that's really just busy work. But uh, let's go ahead and do the take the couple minutes to do the busy work and, and get a final answer here. So all right, we're going to get rid of this stuff here to make some room for ourselves. And let's go ahead and solve this integral. Okay, so the first thing we can do is just square that square root, which will get rid of it, and we'll have the integral of pi times y minus 2 dy, and I copied this wrong. So I want to point this out, actually. This is a mistake that happens all the time when I was teaching calculus in college. Um, writing just co a copying error where you make a mistake where you just don't copy the right thing. I also missed this squared here. 
Oh, no, I didn't miss the squared. Sorry, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. I didn't miss the squared. I actually squared the square root, so that's fine. But I copied a 3, and I made it a 2. So I don't know if that was sloppy handwriting or what happened, but that happens all the time. You're going to get dinged some points for that. So just try and try and catch it as it's happening. Um, okay, so let's continue here. So we'll have pi times... Uh, uh, so we can pull the pi out because that's just a constant. And now we have this integral, which is an easy integral where we just use the antiderivative power rule. So we'll have y squared over 2 minus y. And we have to evaluate this from 1 to 3. And so let's go ahead and plug this in. So this is pi times, we'll plug in 3. So that's 3 squared over 2 minus 3. Then we have to subtract and plug in 1. So that's 1 squared over 2 minus 1, and then we'll go ahead and just continue to solve this. So this is pi times, well let's see, This is these terms are both over 2, so I'll go ahead and combine those. So that's 3 squared over 2 is 9 over 2 minus 1 over 2, so that's 8 over 2. And then we have minus 3 minus minus 1, so minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. And this is 4 minus 2, so this whole thing works out to be 2 pi. Okay, and so that is the final answer. That's the volume of the solid of revolution. All right, I hope this was helpful. In future videos, we'll learn washer method and shell method, and then we'll move on to the harder problems where we have to set up the problem for ourselves and decide which method to use. All right, see you then.